Okay, so today we're going to try to derive how many proteins there are in a cell. Let's start. We're going to look at the size of an average protein um, and going to take a ribosome as a very, very large protein as an example. Now, if you go find a picture of ribosome, and I'll try and put one in the link or in the video, um, you'll see that uh, on uh, sort of the length scale, they're about 10 nanometers. Um, a nanometer, however, is a completely useless way to store uh, the length of the ribosome. A meter is about this big, and how would you be able to reference like 10 to the minus 9 of that um, on a length scale? So we're going to convert the length across of a ribosome into atoms. Um, I'll give you a number which is very important to keep in mind and remember, which is an atom is about 10 to the minus 10 meters across. So a, a smallish atom, an angstrom, about 10 to the minus 10 meters. Um, so if we have 10 nanometers, or 10 to the minus 8, to the minus 10, that tells us uh, a ribosome will be about 100 atoms across. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we need one more number, uh, the width or kind of approximate length of an E. coli cell, and that is about 1 micron, 10 to the minus 6 meters. Again, totally useless for our purposes. Let's convert that into atoms, 10,000 atoms, um, and great. Okay, so we have that an E. coli cell is sitting in front of us. Let's you know, put one in the ether there. Um, we have that it's 10,000 atoms across. And we have that a ribosome is about 100 atoms across. So between those two numbers, you'll see about a 100x multiple. There are about 100 ribosomes. Okay, think about it, 10 to the 4, 10 to the 2. How many 10 to the 2s and 10 to the 4? 10 to the 2. Um, so we'll think about 100 ribosomes stacked up together to kind of cross the E. coli cell, if we were, if we were to really pack them in. Um, now we're going to try to uh, infer from this, if we were to pack you know, these ribosomes into the E. coli cell, about how many there be in one E. coli cell volume. Um, and a good heuristic for volume that you can use typically is just cube the length. Um, there's some other stuff you should multiply it by, but like, you know, in terms of order of magnitude, let's just see what happens if we cube it. So take the length of an E. coli cell, take it to the third power in ribosomes, and what you'll see is 100 ribosomes uh, that you cube is about a million ribosomes. So if you were to pack ribosomes into an E. coli cell and make a very crude guess as to its order of magnitude volume, you see about a million ribosomes in the cell. And that is about the number that you see uh, proteins like in the E. coli cell. That is actually like the number. Um, and so, holy cow, it's really weird. Um, and kind of what you infer from this is that, I mean, ribosomes are a, a large protein. Like, um, there are many smaller proteins. And so this is kind of a, a very um, uh, a very conservative estimate. This is a um, conservative estimate with regards to the size of the protein. But it's just kind of insane that the proteins are that packed. Like literally, if you like stack them next to each other, um, that is how packed like the E. coli cell is. And I think what that reinforces for you is this feeling of like compressiveness or crowding or volume. And so what I hope you take away from this is that a cell is not like this big, airy space. Um, a cell is like a really, really crowded rock concert, except there's like three dimensions of people stacked on top of you in either direction. So like probably suffocate and die. But anyway, um, cells are crazy like that, and it's just good to build intuition for what the cell really is like.